Hey everybody, it's Ben, and I'm back once again with another video for you guys. Today I'll be reviewing Think Tank Volume 1 by Matt Hawkins and Rasal Ekadal. The series is published through Top Cow Productions through Image Comics, and this first trade collects the first four issues of the series. A uh, quick shout out to uh, Stephen McKee and Matt Hawkins Comics for convincing me to pick up the series. So the series revolves around our main character and series protagonist, Dr. David Lauren, who is a genius... Weapon, uh, genius level uh, inventor uh, who works for the military and is a weapons designer. He's actually employed by DARPA who are the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. I'm glad I got that right because I've actually I'm just reading off my notes to check I actually got that right. Um, so uh, David has been um, really lacking in his work lately as we open the first issue um, and he actually explains that he um, he's a weapons designer for the military, he's employed by DARPA and he's also saying he's other things besides a, besides a genius and an inventor um, he's a slacker, a you know uh, um, a mass murderer um, and he's just become disillusioned with making weapons for the military and so they send in Colonel Mark Harrison who is this particular arcs a uh, bad guy who's been designed, uh, or been designated with the task, I should say, of uh, bringing David in line. And so we find out that David's projects have been lacking of late, and they've actually been failures in the eyes of the military. Uh, three of which we actually see play a vital and pivotal role uh, later on in the second half of the story. Uh, the three being a personal-sized EMP, a chameleon stealth suit which renders its wearer invisible, as well as uh, suggestion gas. So we see that uh, Mark Harrison's getting pretty rough with David and trying to bring him in line and trying to get him back to work in doing what he's essentially, you know, uh, he's been told to do by the military, which is obviously des to design uh, weapons for them. And so we find out that David has become um, disillusioned lately with, as I said, creating weapons of, you know, weapons of death for the military. And we get a bit of backstory on both David and his friend from college and fellow um, lab assistant. Uh, um, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Manish, I apologise. Yeah. Uh, we see him actually getting revenge on one of the doctors who actually works with him, um, in the, or works alongside him, I should say, uh, in the military base, Dr. Sedgwick. Um, and you see David actually using a liquid form of BZ gas on a UAV, which is an unmanned aerial vehicle um, on Sezik back in his days in college as he's trying to chat up some uh, some girls in the college and he winds up humiliating him and ever since then Sezik has obviously bared a, uh, a vendetta against, uh, against David. And one of the devices that comes into play later on, um, which David invents in this arc, is a uh, a mind reader device where if you point the device towards somebody and they are thinking of something their thoughts will become uh, displayed as text on the uh, on the screen which David builds from a mobile phone and uh, a uh, a medical brainwave reader and a supernova 10,000 hour long lasting battery which funny enough uh, Dr. Sedgwick actually um, puts together and so Manish and David both decide to go out and field test this uh, mind reader device and David decides to try and uh, use it in some of the lovely ladies in a nearby bar. And as a result he picks up his, um, winds up picking up his love interest, uh, Mira Shui, um, in the bar. And funny enough, uh, the day after, or many hours later and many drinks later, um, Mira even thinks to herself, he's probably married, I'm so stupid. Um, which David isn't married and um, unfortunately David and Mira both become apprehended by uh, by Mark Harrison and they're both subsequently taken back to the um, to the military base. As I said, um, we find out the reasoning as to why David has become disillusioned with uh, making weapons for the military is the fact that he, while he loves inventing stuff, he doesn't appreciate and doesn't approve of the um, the uses of which um, his inventions are being put to in terms of the military. At the same time, he also has a um, the feelings of the measure of guilt that's owed him, and he feels that 
you know, all of the blood on his hands is because he does what he does for the military. And so he becomes, as I said, disillusioned. He gives up making weapons for them and he decides to, after confessing what he does for the military to Mira, um, he actually decides to engineer their escape and to just get out of the life that he's in. Uh, I will say that Rasan Ekadao's artwork is absolutely fantastic and the grayscale really helps you appreciate the level of detail that goes into every single panel that um, Rasan puts in every page. He particularly excels at um, facial expressions as well as um, uh, the way that the eyes are drawn as well to really amplify the um, facial expressions and he also does really well in um, some of the action scenes as well. And so we see um, the practical capabilities of uh, the three projects which I mentioned earlier on, which are the suggestion gas, um, the uh, chameleon stealth suit, and um, the personnel sized EMP. And the inspiration for uh, the suggestion gas was actually uh, Obi Wan Kenobi and um, Darth Vader using the force to. Uh, uh, manipulate the minds of the feeble-minded, uh, which I thought was a really great um, pop culture reference on the part of uh, Matt Hawkins in terms of the inspiration for most of David's inventions, actually, um, particularly the uh, suggestion gas and the um, the chameleon stealth suit. And uh, there's also another really great reference where um, David actually finds. Uh, so I can find the panel. Um, he actually finds all of his equipment that he needs to uh, make his escape in the gents' toilet, uh, which is a great reference to um, the restaurant scene with Michael Corleone, Salazzo, and uh, Captain McCluskey from Godfather One, uh, which is one of the, which is part one of three of one of the greatest film trilogies ever made, and some of my favourite um, mafia movies ever made as well. Um, at the same time, as I said, you see the practical side of um, the inventions over the course of the second half of the story arc in these first four issues. I won't go into everything because I don't want to spoil it for you guys because I want you all to pick up and read it. If you flip past the uh, the cover gallery, in the back of the trade we have uh, Matt Hawkins' uh, science class, which he details all of the, um, the sources of information and all of the real-life... Um, implications of some of the devices that he implements into the story. Uh, for example, uh, the mind reader which David creates is actually being used today in real life. Um, the collider is real, the predator drones are real, um, the metal stone weapon uh, which David works on later on, that's real, the BZ gas, I won't go into everything, um, but it's just really interesting and really um, just a great level of attention and detail on the part of Matt Hawkins in terms of the writing and the storytelling and some of the sources that he uses um, for the story. As I've said, Rassan Ekadal's artwork is absolutely fantastic and Matt Hawkins just does a fantastic job with the writing and the storytelling. Um, he really makes David a really rudimentary character in the respect that you root through him throughout the course of the story and you come to actually sympathise with him in terms of the it's slightly exaggerated, but the real-life situation of being stuck in a job where he loves it, but at the same time he doesn't feel that his efforts and his um, his labours are not so much appreciated, but the use of which his, um, his invention is actually being used by the military. Um, the tagline for this series is that there's a warning that this book will actually make you smarter. And it's actually true, because a lot of this stuff, as I said, is actually real, and... It's just really interesting to realize that, you know, devices and weapons such as these in, in the science class, which in the back of this trade, they're actually all real. And some of the, um, you know, some of the finer points are the fact that there are people out there, you know, employed by the defense in the world of defense to actually come up with um, various inventions for, you know, military use. I mean... Just the, the leaps and bounds of which, you know, technology and science are coming along these days, again, in, in the real world. I mean, a, a, bit of a, a, a bit of an obvious example, but, you know, mobile phone technology and, um, you know, medical sciences and just science in general as a whole is just coming along 
you know, in, in leaps and bounds. If you're a fan of independent comics, if you're a fan of action adventure, um, if you're a fan of really thought provoking and mind expanding stories in terms of obviously stories that actually make you think and actually make you really appreciate um, just the level of detail and thought and planning that goes into a series like this, um, then I highly, highly recommend Think Tank. As I've said, Matt Hawkins does a fantastic job of uh, doing the writing and the storytelling and Rasan Ekadar's artwork is absolutely fantastic. Um, so if you're a fan of anything that I've outlined or if I've managed to pique your interest, then I highly, highly recommend you check this series out. And with that, that was my review of Think Tank Volume 1. Thank you everybody for watching. Hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Didn't like it, thumbs it down. But as I always say, if you thumbs on the video, by means, please feel free to tell me why in the comments below or send me a private message. And if it's your first time here, by all means, please feel free to subscribe. And until next time, this is Scambit896, signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.